Hello everyone, Omerko here, self-taught web developer. I think that this will be the last tutorial for Angular Material series. If you wish to watch the full series, check the description below. In this tutorial we will work with the CDK tree. This means that you will learn how to create such a tree and with also multiple items inside. So we will be able to nest those, open and close the tree as well. So for what can this be used? Well, something nice like this is mostly used for nesting folders, for example. Now, let's code! The first thing that I will do, as usual, is create the component for this tree element. To do that, I will use the command of ng, g for generate, c for component, and I will generate my component in components slash cdk slash tree. Now that we have our component, let's use it. In my app.component.ts file, I will hide this component from the last video. If you wish to watch that video, you will have a link down in the description. Right after this component, I will set the comment of cdk tree, then I will use my app tree component that we just generated, and I will also put the ending comment here, which is end of cdk tree. For us to be able to use this tree element, we must import the specific module for it. For that, I will open my app.module.ts file. In here, I will import my cdk tree module and I will import that from at angular slash cdk slash tree. Just be sure also to pass this cdk tree module down in the imports array as well. Finally, we can start working with our tree. So for that, I will go into components, then cdk, then tree, and I will open up the TypeScript file of it. In this file, I will make sure to import, well, paste some data here. I will also uh, import this array data source, which must come from cdk slash collections here. With this here, we will create the data source, well, the array data source for our own tree that we will use. We will create the array of vehicles, and inside we will have two types of vehicles, cars and motorcycles. Cars will have two childs inside, BMW and Land Rover, and motorcycles will have one, which is Suzuki. As you can see, these are all nested nodes. And we will use exactly this data to create our own, well, dynamic tree structure. Next to the data here, we should also handle the controls. So our nested tree will know which control is which. And if control has a child, that control can be opened or closed. And also, that child must be nested inside of that controller. To do that, after my vehicles here, I will create tree control. This tree control will be set to a new nested tree control, which must be imported here at the top from atangler slash cdk slash tree. Now that I have this nested tree control, this is a class which I can run, and in here I will get the node. And this node will be the type, well, the exact type of our own nodes that we have, like names and children. So here we could create our own custom model for this, but for the sake of this tutorial, I will just set the type of this node to any. And what I will do, I will return back here node.children. So this string control will check if the node has a children, and if it does, it will return that control back. So we will exactly know which controls should come at the top and have nested other items inside. Next to this tree control, we should check if the control has a child or not. I could write the custom method for that, but what I will do, I will actually here write has child, which will be a property, but we will use a method here, which will return true or false to us based on a control. So first of all, for this method, I can well, use a number which will be the index of my control. As this index won't be used for this method, I will just use underscore here and set the type of it to be, sorry, not the index, but the number. Right after it, I will get my control, well, my node back, and here I will set the type again to any. Now, as I have this method, I will use arrow function here, and I will check 
if the control doesn't have a children. And also I will check if that node will control its own children, the length of it is bigger than zero. That way we will know if there is a, well, if there are children inside of our controls. For example, our cars have two controls, two children inside, right? But this BMW doesn't have any controls. We will later use this has child to present those arrows so we can open up the specific menus in a tree. So we should be able to open up this cars menu, but not the BMW menu, because this is not the menu, it is just the name of one of the children's. With all this in place, our data, our controls, nodes, we can create the tree markup finally. To do that, I will open up the tree.component.html file. In here, I will use now CDK tree element, and we are able to use this element because we imported the module in app.module.ts file. This CDK tree element must know about few things. First thing, it must know about the data source. And the data source for us will be vehicles. And then it should also know about the tree controls. So here I will use tree control and I will set it to our own tree control that we have in our TypeScript. Now inside of here we could create actually the nested items for our tree. To do that I will use cdk nested tree node and this here will present one tree node that is nested. So as this node must know which exactly item it should work with, well here we could actually use this cdk tree node definition which should be set, well which should pull the node for us. So here I will just set the variable of node, so let node. I will also pass a custom class here of tree node, so I could actually later style this as well. But inside of my nested tree here, what I wish to have, well, that can be my button. And this button can be, well, it can be just the icon button. So I will use mat icon button, and it can be disabled, for example. So now, after this button, actually, I will present the name of my node and to do that I will property bind my node and then the name of it so name. The reason why we are able to use the name well because one of each of our nodes here has a name property. So we are using that name property right here. So now let's create also those nodes that should that are nestable. So here after this cdk nested tree node I will again create cdk nested tree node. Again we must use that cdk tree node definition and this time we will set it equal again to node, well not equal but we will create the variable of it to be let node, but what I will do, I will present this one when has child. So this means that when this node, any of our nodes, answers to this has child, if this is true, if this returns the true value to us, that means that this node will be presented. And as this node is toggable, well, nestable, it means that it should not be presented on a main level, but inside of our tree. And that's pretty much the setup of that. I will again use the custom class here of tree node, and let's move inside of our nested tree node. So in here I will use the button first of all, which can be mat icon button, and I will use cdk tree node toggle. This here means that this button will actually toggle our, well, nested trees. Well, not trees, but one tree, the each node in a tree. And now inside of this button I will create mat icon element. This is obviously the material icon. I will pass mat icon arrow class here and inside we will present the arrow. So we could present for example chevron right and uh, expand more, those are both valid icons for material, but I will present those only if that tree control is expanded or not. So what I will do here, I will check if my tree control 
which is this current tree control and on it we will have method called is expandable. Well, we should not use that method, but is expand that, that one. So this, this method will actually check if node was expanded. The only thing that we need to pass to it is our node actually. So if this is true, then I will show this expand more icon. Otherwise, I will show this chevron right icon. So now we are we are showing the specific item more dynamically, which you will see when we test this. But again, right after my button, as I did here, right after the button, I will again property bind my node that name. So the last thing that I will do here is actually hide well my nodes that should not be expanded. So right after this node that name, I will do something. Let me make some spacing here. I will create one div, and this div will I will property bind here a class, and the class, for example, can be tree invisible. So we could set it to be invisible. And here we will set it to be invisible if tree node is not expanded. And I must pass the node here. So now in this div, instead of showing my nested tree or a specific button and also the data, what I can do, actually, I will grab the uh, ng container and I will pass inside cdk tree node outlet. So it will automatically pass that tree node outlet into this container. So at this point, this is what we have. We have our tree here, we can see that obviously BMW and Land Rover are kind of belonging to these cars and Suzuki is kind of belonging to these motorcycles, but none of those is actually hidden. Also, I could click on these icons, the icons will change based on if the well tree was expanded or not, but it's not actually expanding while showing and hiding the items well nodes inside of that tree. Well, to finalize this, we must add a bit of CSS into the mix. So coming back to my code now, I will open up tree.component.css uh, file. In here, first of all, I will grab that tree invisible and I will display it as none, which means if this returns a proper value, then this class will be showing on this specific div, which is tree invisible. And based on that class, we will hide the content of it, that outlet part. And right after this, I will grab my tree node and I will display that not as inline, but as block. And finally, after this tree node, I will grab tree node again and tree node again inside, which means that that's a nested node. That, that is, for example, BMW inside of our car's uh, tree. So here I will just add a bit of padding on the left side, like 40 pixels, so we can actually see that something is nested inside. With all of this, we should be finished. Now we do have only cars and motorcycles in our tree. If I would click on this specific node, it will expand only that node. So we can see items inside and those are obviously nested inside because I styled it that way. So we can see that the functionality through this CDK tree is available to us. It is just on us how do we wish to style it. But this will be it for this tutorial guys. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe as I post new content weekly. Thank you once again and bye bye.